Hello, welcome to more creative watercolours. Today I'm looking at tulips. We're still using the same flowing patches of colour but giving them a little more meaning and shape into something we recognise. So two, two things we can do. In the first one I've masked off an area of paper. You can do this any size you like but it's a good idea to keep it fairly small. And what I'm going to do with that is just wet the paper, not all over, just in parts, just to give the paint a few surprises when it goes on. I'm starting with a nice bright yellow, not too watery because some of the water is already on the page. I'm going to do an approximate tulip shape like that, just a kind of round bit. It will run all over the place and that's fine. All we're doing with these colours is laying the foundations and getting some really bright, vibrant layers of colour down. And let's do a pink one there. And maybe echo of another pink one in the background there, something like that. A few stems. A few patches for leaves. Something like that. That's all I'm going to do to start with. It, it then got to dry completely, so I'm going to leave that to one side and work on the one that's just there and already dry. What we're doing is using these like zooming in on a camera to focus in. So we're putting this into focus by adding a little more paint in part. So what you've got is some of the underneath layers still showing through with this lovely tra um, transparency as if the light's coming through it. If I add a little touch of blue to the side of that, it will give it a bit of depth. So you're starting to get a few crisp, clear lines on top of all the smudgy, soft lines, and that's a nice contrast. Okay, let's find one of the yellow ones. Here he is. And there's another one. So already, even with two layers, I've got several layers of colour. I've got places where there's no colour, places where there's one very dilute veil of colour, places where there's stronger colour and places where there's two layers. So again, even with two layers on, it's then time to put it to one side, leave it completely alone and don't touch it until it's dry. That's where it's so easy to go wrong, you keep faffing away at it and in the end you ruin it. While that's drying, on a spare piece of paper, here's another thing to try which is very tulipy. I'm going to get quite a deep red. A nice deep red is by mixing two reds together, that's cadmium and alizarin. A nice brush load. And then again, I'm not drawing an outline and colouring it in, I'm just skidding the brush into a tulip shape like that, skidding it into that like kind of cup shape, tidying it up a bit. And then with a wet brush, softening some of the colours, pushing them around a bit. That'll do. Now I'll put the stem in while it's all still wet, and I'll do that with yellow, just to lay the foundations. And start down here and then go, go for it. There you go. The colours will run there, but that's quite nice because what you sometimes get with tulips, if I dab that, is a patch of light yellow where the stem hits the flower. You can at this stage, if you want to, drop a bit of blue in. I never mix green on the palette because the minute you've got blue and yellow in close together, they will mix green so easily that they really don't need any more encouragement. Let's get some of the leaves in. Okay, nice and fluid. Starting off with the tip of the brush, pressing down to get the broad stroke and then tailing off with the tip. It's almost like using a calligraphy pen, varying the pressure to get these fluid lines. Again, while that's wet, let's get some blue in. At some stage I'll talk about which blues and which yellows to mix greens, but have a go and see what you can find out. It's 
quite a long subject. And that's just, we're just laying the foundation, so that's our first layer. Don't want to fiddle with it too much. Again, leave it to dry, leave it to do its own thing. And in the meantime, one of these will have dried. That one has. And I can start putting in a little background Bit of my red now. Just play with some blues and yellows. I want a kind of little shadowy patch of leaves behind me. So I'm going to put a combination of blues and yellows behind it. Just give me a foundation to build on. Again, it's what you leave out is just as important as what you put in. You leave, leave bits for the stem. Put darker bits around the flowers. It's almost like back to that first exercise where you're just putting patches of colour onto a page. This time I'm just doing it a little bit more focused on what you're trying to look like. So a nice variety of greens behind them and nice bits missed out to show the light shining through. And again, I'm going to leave that to dry before adding more, but you can start to see the whole thing taking shape. There's no limit to how long you can keep going, as long as you make sure that you leave time for each layer to dry. You can adjust it while it's still wet, but don't fiddle with it while it's still drying. While we're waiting for that to dry, just going back to our single tulip. Let's set the various ones lying around here, I've been practicing. Let's do this one. That's now completely dry, so it can have more intense colours now. Oops, did I interrupt that one? Yeah, I've got some white spaces there, and I can put a veil of dilute colour over that to make it look dappled light. Again, I was hoping to have some real tulips with me, but the shop didn't have any, so I'm making it up. Normally you could pay attention to where one petal overlaps another. Bit of a ragged one, that. Put a little bit more blue, not too much, in the shadow side. And then intensify the greens by putting more blues and yellows on. Because everything that's underneath will still so show through, gives you that richness of texture. When you put a second layer of green on, sometimes there's these bands of lighter colour on a leaf, and that's a good way to show it. But it's a good way, while you're layering like this, you're more able to show that you're painting an object that's got light falling on it, and that's got a degree of roundness, rather than just everything being flat colour. When that's dry, I can deepen up some of the shadows where one li the leaves overlap at the bottom. Another example is here. When you get a leaf that's folded down on itself, that illusion is made complete by deepening that shadow where the leaf actually folds. That can be quite effective. And then that one comes in front of it. So it's all a bit of trickery, but it's quite effective. So there are various tricks you can use to create an illusion. You're being a magician. The idea of giving it time to dry before you come back to it means that you can look at it and go, 
Is it finished? Does it need anything else? What does it need? Does it need another veil of colour? Do that again. It's always a good idea to be working on lots of things at once. I've nearly finished. I'm just going to show you what happens when we take this to its final conclusion because that's still wet so I'll leave that alone. I've been adding patches of dark to this one just to show the spaces in between the leaves. These wedges of colour where one leaf overlaps another. But the most exciting thing of all is being able to take the masking tape off and I'm going to cut it so that I can leave that undisturbed. Put it on too tightly. There we go. It's a good idea not to leave masking tape on paper too long. If you leave it on several weeks it will damage the paper and dry out. There we go. So that kind of thing could be quite satisfying because it's a, not wasting too much paper. You can do a whole page full and learn from each one you do <coughs> and you'll have something that's worth keeping and something you're happy with. Have a go. Do get in touch if you have any questions. On my website I've put a download to tell you where to get basic equipment and what I advise you to get. Um, it's on my tuition page on my on my website but let me know if you've got other things you'd like me to to do um thank you very much bye